for radical equations, radical functions, uh, we also have restrictions on these as well. So in a radical function, the values inside our square root, since we're only looking at real numbers, the values inside our square root are not allowed to be negative. So it must be non-negative. Now, in order for it to be non-negative, basically what that means is it has to be greater than or equal to zero. So let's solve this. So we have seven minus three X must be greater than or equal to zero. So to solve this, we can subtract seven. So we have negative three X is greater than or equal to negative seven. Divide by negative three, divide by negative three. And we get that X and remember, we're dividing by a negative here, so this sign has to switch. So x is going to now be less than or equal to. A negative divided by a negative is going to be positive. So x is less than 7 thirds. So this is our domain in set notation. Domain is the set of all x, such that x is less than or equal to 7 thirds. And again, let's look at this in interval notation. So let's do a quick number line here to figure out what this will look like. So here's zero. Seven thirds is in between two and three. So one, two, three. So between two and three. In this case, we are allowed to equal, right? Because it's less than or equal to. So it's a closed circle here. And then it's all of the values less than that. So we're going left like this. And the closed circle here. So what will this be in interval notation? Well, because we're equal to, remember when it's closed, when it's equal to, we use a bracket. So this is going all the way off to negative infinity. And it's going all the way up to 7 thirds. So our interval notation is going to be from negative infinity up to 7 thirds. And we use a bracket at 7 thirds because we're allowed to equal that value. Now this last one is a combination. So it's both a rational function and it has a radical in it. So if we recall, we said that the numerator has to be greater than or equal to zero because it's inside a radical, right? Anything inside the radical has to be non-negative. And we know that our denominator is not allowed to equal zero. So we have to set up two different equations for this. So we have two X plus nine is not allowed to equal to zero. And we have three X plus eight has to be greater than or equal to zero. So let's solve this. So subtract nine, we have two X cannot equal negative nine. Divide by two, we get that X is not allowed to equal negative nine halves. So that's our first um, restriction on our domain. Uh, the second one, we would subtract eight. So we have three X is greater than or equal to negative eight. Divide by three, we get that x is greater than or equal to negative eight thirds. Uh, we don't have to flip the sign in this one, even though our result is negative, because we divided by a positive. Okay, so let's look at um, what this would look like in set notation. So our domain would be the set of all x such that uh, the smallest number, so this is in between four and five, this is in between uh, two and three. So this is the smallest number. So it's a set of all x such that x does not equal negative nine halves and x is greater than or equal to negative eight thirds. So that's our set notation. And let's look at it on a number line to figure out the interval notation. So make a quick number line here. So we have zero here, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, 
negative 5, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. And we'll put 1 over here. So in this one, we said that x is not allowed to equal negative 9 halves. So that's negative 4.5. So we can use an open circle here at negative 9 halves to signify this here. And then we also are told that x needs to be greater than or equal to negative 8 thirds. Uh, this is negative 2 and 2 thirds. So it's over here. We are allowed to equal that value. So we will have a closed circle here at negative 2 and 2 thirds. Uh, so what are values greater than this? What's a number greater than negative 2 and 2 thirds? Well, negative 2 or 0 or 1. All of those values are to the right of that value here. So we're going off to the right. So if we're talking about the interval notation, this one's actually kind of interesting because we see that all of the values that are in our solution set have to be greater than or equal to negative 8 thirds right here. But we have this here, right? We have this here at negative 9 halves. Negative 9 halves is not in this interval. So actually, we don't even need to talk about it because by the fact that it's not in this interval, it already takes care of itself. So it, can't, it doesn't even really matter. So we actually didn't need that up in this one here. So really, our domain is just the set of all x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 8 thirds. Because by making this statement, it implies that x can't be negative 9 halves. Because it also can't be negative 4 or negative 5 or any of these other values over here. So if we're looking at the interval notation for this, we are starting here at negative 8 thirds and we're going off to the right, off to positive infinity. Um, now remember, it's a closed circle, so that means we use a bracket and then we're allowed to go off to the right. So we're starting here at negative 8 thirds. We're going off to infinity. So we know that at infinity, we have to use a parentheses because we never can include that value, we don't ever reach it. And then negative 8 thirds is allowed to be included, so we use a bracket. So that would be our domain in interval notation. So it would be a bracket, negative 8 thirds, comma, infinity with a parentheses.